On a quiet Sunday morning, friends and colleagues of Dr. Fumi Lola Adefolalu, a lecturer at the Federal University of Technology, Mina, grew concerned when she failed to show up for church service and wasn't answering her phone. Worried, they visited her residence in the Baiko area of Mina, Niger State. What they found was beyond anyone's worst fears. Her door was forced open and inside they were met with a devastating sight. Dr. Fumi lay lifeless in a pool of blood with multiple stab wounds across her body and two blood-stained knives were found beside her. The room, once filled with her presence, was now eerily silent, a brutal crime leaving a lasting scar on all those who witnessed it. Dr. Fumilala Adefolalu was born on the 12th of September 1967 in Shaki, West Local Council of Oyo State. She spent her early years in Kaduna and began her career in 1993 as a lab officer at Royal Clinic and Maternity. In November 2005, she became an assistant lecturer in the biochemistry department at FUT Mina and had since published over 30 articles and presented at numerous conferences. She lost her husband, Professor Adefolalu, also a lecturer at the same uni, in January of 2014. And despite this, she continued her work in academia and the church. In 2009, she joined the Voice of Mercy Ministry and was ordained in 2015 as a pastor. She is a beloved mother of three. Her life revolved around helping others, whether through education or spiritual guidance. Yet, in a cruel twist of fate, it was one of those she sought to help, a 14-year-old girl named Joy Afikafi, who played a role in her untimely death. Dr. Fumi was deeply admired, not just for her role as a lecturer, but for her compassion as the lead pastor of Voice of Mercy Ministry. Behind the respect and admiration, however, was a concern that troubled the church elders. Their beloved pastor was living alone. Her three children had grown up and moved away, leaving her alone in her quiet residence. It was this solitude that led the church elders to suggest a solution, a companion who could offer both company and assistance. When Dr. Fumi expressed interest in taking a young church member, Joy Afekafi, the elders thought it was an answer to their prayers. Joy was a 14-year-old girl from a struggling family. With her father deceased and her mother living far away, she was in need of support. The elders met with her mother, who, who unsurprisingly vouched for her daughter's character. That's mistake number one. I mean, can we really trust a mother to objectively vouch for her own child? Let's be honest, no parent is going to admit their child has serious flaws. But after that meeting, the church elders gave their approval. On October 1st, 2023, Joy was presented to Dr. Fumi as a housemaid, a gesture of charity that soon turned tragic. Initially, everything seemed fine. Joy provided the companionship and the help that the doctor needed. But within weeks, Joy's behavior turned troubling. It started small, money disappearing from where it had been carefully kept. At first, the doctor brushed it off. Perhaps she thought she misplaced it. But the incident grew more frequent, and when confronted, Joy denied any involvement, even though they were the only two at home. The once quiet and seemingly innocent girl soon began to display a more sinister side. She became increasingly disrespectful and defiant. It became clear to the doctor that this was not the quiet companion she had imagined. The church elders were informed and they advised Dr. Fumi to dismiss the girl before the situation escalated. Concerned for her safety, the pastor made the difficult decision to let Joy go just a week before her tragic end. That decision proved fatal. What no one could have foreseen was the deep resentment that burned inside the teenage girl who was now plotting against the very woman who had taken her in. Humiliated by her dismissal, she conspired with two schoolmates, Walex and Smart, to exact revenge on the woman who had once shown her kindness. With her accomplices by her side, Joy returned to the home she had once lived in, but this time with a single purpose in mind. On the evening of October 28, 2023, at about 4.30 p.m., Joy knocked on Dr. Fumi's gate 
under the pretense of making amends. The pastor welcomed her back in, unaware of the danger lurking nearby. According to Joy's confession, once inside they began to talk. As they were talking, she had another visitor who came to work at the house. But as he was leaving the premises, her accomplices forced their way in. What followed was a brutal First, they struck the doctor with a wooden stool on her head. Then Wallet and Smart, armed with knives, attacked the pastor's her repeatedly in the stomach, arms and legs. Her final words calling out for Jesus echoed Jesus. through the house. Jesus. After murdering her, they ransacked the home, stealing her phone, laptop and even the battery from her car before fleeing on a motorcycle. The next morning, around 10 a.m., colleagues and church members arrived to check on Dr. Fumi when she hadn't attended church. They forced the door open and found her lifeless body. Her home had become the scene of an unimaginable tragedy. The police were immediately called and her body was taken to the IBB Specialist Hospital in Mina. The Niger State Police swiftly launched an investigation, interviewing neighbors and friends. By October 30, 2023, 14-year-old Joy Afekafi was arrested, found hiding at a residence in the Beganu area of Mina. In her confession, Joy admitted to being the mastermind behind the murder, revealing that their initial plan was only to teach her a lesson, but decided to kill her to avoid being identified. Dr. Fumi Adefolalu was laid to rest on November 18, 2023, at the Christian Cemetery in Mina. Her funeral was marked by profound sorrow. Mourners, including family and colleagues, church members, wept as her coffin was lowered into the ground. Her daughter, Tolu, and son, Sheyi, expressed grief and disbelief, recalling the milestone their mother would miss. Almost a year after, Wallet and Smart are still at large. They haven't been found. The investigation was transferred to the state CID for further action. In the end, the most heartbreaking truth of all was that Dr. Fumi welcomed her own killer into her home, a woman who had built her life around helping others, whether through teachings, her faith or charity, had extended that same kindness to joy, never imagining it would lead to her own death. In her desire to offer hope to a young girl in need, she unknowingly brought in the very person who would take her life. Her legacy will forever be a reminder of how kindness can sometimes invite the deepest of wounds. Yet, despite the darkness that clouded her final moments, her light, the kindness she showed, the life she touched, cannot be extinguished. While this shouldn't discourage us from being kind, it should encourage us to be wise, pay attention to the warning signs, trust, but also protect yourself. Surround yourself with people who respect your boundaries and don't take your kindness for granted. Ultimately, helping others is a beautiful act, but self-awareness and discernment can prevent it from turning into tragedy. Let's carry forward Dr. Fumi's legacy of generosity, but with the understanding that it's okay to say no and step back when necessary for your own safety and well-being. May her soul rest in perfect peace. Please leave your thoughts about this case in the comments. As always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in my next video. Bye.